Welcome to Perspectives. I'm so glad that you're here. This is a little different, this episode. So you're about to get to behind the scenes. You can see a real life coaching session, but also what Sasha's coached on, and I'm not gonna give anything away except to say it's to do with parenting and that's all we reveal. And what I think is really key to know when becoming a coach is you don't have to be an expert on the subject matter. You need to be an expert on coaching. And if you enjoy it, I'd love it if you could share it with someone and make sure you hit subscribe. Enjoy. Okay, Sasha, thank you so much for volunteering. It's fantastic. Do you feel you're in the space? Do you have this experience? Yes, I do. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. Wonderful. And were you expecting this? No, not at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm quietly delighted, I must say. <laughs> I want to put out coaching more to the world and just share different experiences of it with people. And I love coaching. So thank you. I really appreciate you so much volunteering. Oh, oh thank you. I'm so appreciating that I got, you know, that there's this opportunity. It's wonderful. Yeah. So let's do a, a, a session. So mm-hmm. there, we're, we're going to do a full session. It's not an introduction or I'm just going to demonstrate the opening. Let's, let's do this. And it may be, it may present itself that a further session would be warranted, would be preferable for you. There may be some um, bits and pieces that we might want to pick up at a later date. So is it okay if we treat this as part of the coaching rather than thinking it all comes down to this one conversation? (laughs) We just relieve ourselves of the need to think it's this or it's, do you know what I mean? Like this, well, it'll be what it'll be. Absolutely. And the, the incremental coaching is, is perfect. If it's just okay. a little shift today, then that's wonderful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to share with you that there's no judgment around this. I realize this is, you already know this is going to be broadcast, but there's no judgment from me. There is nothing you have to say to impress me. In fact, trying to impress me would probably get in the way of the results we want to mm. achieve. I just want to serve you as best I can. Is it okay if I, when I have a piece of information that I need, I may interrupt and jump in rather than it be a regular conversation. It'll be a, actually, I've got the bit I need. May I coach you moment? Would that be okay? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And if you can just put a cone around us, that it's just the two of us and just whatever you want to bring that you feel is in the realms of today's experience, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't have to be everything. However you want it to unfold, that's, that's what we're going to be here for. Beautiful. Sounds okay, great. so anything else you'd like to share or a preference you have around how you're coached? No, not at all. I'm open and willing. Yeah, you are. It's awesome. So, Sasha, where would you like to take us today? Thanks, Sharon. Um, so where I would like to go is very much around uh, these, this feeling of guilt that I have that I've, I believe holds me back and... This, it it is something that I've tried to work through um, a number of different times. And whilst it may feel okay in the moment, it will then come back. And uh, what I mean by that is that I had three babies in under four years and I didn't, and I was, this is pre-coaching. I had no connection to really my emotions. Um, I was very over-functioning, very controlling, um, very controlled, um, I, I think I may have mentioned this to you in the past in passing that I, I very much took on the role of strong woman, you know, throw anything at me and I can handle it. And, and then when I had my first and then had my second very quickly, I didn't recognize at the time, but because I was, because postnatal depression was described as sadness, but I had no ability to access sadness. Hmm. So I accessed anger and rage and fury and uh, it came across that way. And anytime someone asks me, asks me how you were doing, I'm like, well, I'm doing perfectly fine. I'm great. I'm nailing this, you know? And so, um, but what, what came to be now that I have clarity looking back is that I, um, I shut my eldest daughter down, um, didn't allow her emotions to be okay because if I didn't know that emotions were okay. Um, and subsequently, since learning so much of the YUS program and learning about when, you know, zero to sef- seven, how vital that is for children, I really feel as though uh, I didn't allow her to be who she is and now there is a result of that I probably don't want to go into too much to respect her privacy sure um and it because it's 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 more about how I guess I am with um with my own feelings of guilt and 
I felt as though I just wasn't, I, uh, I'm a little, not sure where to go with how to explain it further. Um, I feel as though there is so much that I didn't do that I could have done. And I feel that there's so much that I did do that I probably shouldn't have done. And mm. that really means the, there's a very strong flavor of, of guilt. And anytime she's not okay, then I'm not okay because I take full responsibility for how she is in the world. And as a coach, I know logically some of that isn't true though it doesn't feel like that. Yeah. It feels true. It yeah. feels real. And yeah, that's, okay. Thank that's you. the description. Thank you. May I know the age of your daughter? She's nine. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And how is this a problem for you now? How is it showing up for you presently? Mm. I think I externalise. My evidence is on the external. And anytime she's not okay, then, then that means that I'm not, not, I, I make it mean uh, that I'm not okay and that I'm the root cause of whatever's going on for her. And the way that it, I feel that I've grown so much since coaching and, and, and have taken a very dedicated view in terms of how I get better um, and how I'm, I'm, you know, I'm more clear and more able in this world. And I feel that this is the last element of me or maybe the, the, the deepest shadow emotion that I'm still holding on to that I would like not to hold on to anymore. I think I've beaten myself up enough. It's the... Well, let me give you some good news. This isn't the last layer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Let's get straight to the motivational portion of the coaching. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Fair enough. No, I'm not seeing it as a... Oh, once this is done, I'm free. I'll be amazing. I, I definitely know that, you know, there is those. I just feel that this story has been playing out for such a long time yeah. and it doesn't serve me and it doesn't serve her, I, I don't yeah. believe, because I think what I'm doing is that I'm going, there's something wrong with you because there's something wrong with me and I created something wrong with you and that may not actually be true. Yeah. She may just be her in her own brilliance. Yeah. And you don't even know if you're seeing her accurately anymore. Correct. I'm seeing her through this filter of yeah. shame and blame and, you know, yeah. guilt. But I don't want that for her anymore. I don't want that for me anymore. Yeah, of course. So the, if you were to state it as an outcome, mm. What would be, if you could wave a magic wand and <laughs> rather than going back in time, which we, which I don't have available to me today and I'm not offering. <laughs> Damn it, that would have been perfect. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Given this is where you believe you're at now, what would be your ideal? My ideal would be... to lessen the negativity and emotion and to see her from and you or from your daughter fr from me from me yeah. so I, I take responsibility that this is me yeah. and um and you know to 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 remove the filter perhaps of of how i've been seeing her and myself but moreover to get a different perspective just to get a different shift in terms of maybe what is actually happening rather than what I think I'm seeing. Okay. okay. Your screen's just frozen. So I'm going to just wait oh. one second. You're back. Yes. Great. <laughs> okay. So I think I get it. So for you, it's about, there's one of the things I want to pick up and you said reduce the negative and the emotion. I'm, we're probably going to want to state that in a positive term. Mm. And you also say to remove the filter. Uh, and then you do that, the moving towards, we move away from this noise. Yeah. Which is to remove the filter and see her more accurately. Yeah. I think is how you expressed it. Is that accurate? That is, yeah. So, so being able to have a, a, you know, if I'm seeing her from this angle, which is straight ahead, maybe I could see her and myself from a different angle that would shed more light around how we are with each other and how we are mm. as individuals. Sure. Okay. 
And when you think about achieving this, what's, what are the feelings you have attached to it? If you had that, what would the feeling be that comes up for you? There'd be many. Uh, the, 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 the first feeling is a lightness. Um, yeah. There's relief. There's yeah. a sense of possibility. And yeah. there's a sense of um, exploration and yeah. a, a sort of a, like a real willingness to explore and to see what the possibility is. So it really shifts into that possibility focus and that, that lighter sense uh, rather than the, you know, the other place I've been with it. Okay. Thank you. And are you the oldest child? I am. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> I've got four mm. younger brothers. Yeah. And how was it for you when you grew up? Uh, it was an interesting time. Um, Mum and dad didn't have the best relationship and they split when um, I was five and a half. We were living in overseas and we ended up coming back and that was when my first brother was born. And the validate, probably where my parents weren't awesome um, at doing it to themselves and then thus showing me is how to understand their emotions or uh, there was no real validation of what experiences I went through. Um, it was quite a, a confusing time for all that time because it was moving back to Australia, my brother being born, living with my grandparents and then 18 months moving in with my stepfather and another child that had come along by then. So it was this whirlwind of um, quite a lot of chaos for me and I was sw swapping schools and uh, it was an interesting time. It, you know, that period of my life was, was interesting. And you make it interesting for your daughter, it seems. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I hadn't thought of it like that. Yeah. Turmoil is the feeling. Yeah. Or the experience. Yeah. I wonder what's going to happen next. And I wonder how someone responds when they don't know what's going to happen next. Depends on what it is, I think. Well, for kids, it's either... Yeah. Stay stability and love or it's something that I don't understand. Well, I think she's come from the I don't understand. So mm. for me to create stability and love, don't get me wrong, there is an enormous amount of love. Mm. But to, and, and I believe, believe I'm helping her with that and I'm seeing her flourish as a result. It's, yeah. So why isn't that enough? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good point. Why isn't that enough? I think because when she is flourishing, then I can go, yeah, great. I'm, do I'm doing it. I'm, this, this, is, this is a good thing. This is, she's learning, she's flourishing. But as children do, they have shifts backwards like we all do. And I think it's the shift backward that then I go, oh, well, of course it was me. And I've, you know, I've, I've caused whatever the issue is neurologically hmm. so your daughter has to be perfect mm. no no I don't believe she has to be perfect I no let me check that hang on I no I, I I, w I wouldn't say perfect, though her emotions frighten me uh, of the intensity and of how it can be flatline one moment and then explosion. And wow, that's actually just mm, something to, mm, okay. Um, and, and I find that very, very intense and I find that I don't have the tools for it. So if we could, so it doesn't mean that she's not allowed to, it's, so I, just look, I can hear all these conditions coming in. <laughs> it's terrible being a coach and being coached because you, you figure out what you, what's going on at the same time saying it. Um, 
it's just that I would love for them to be slightly more contained, <laughs> which is so ironic. I'll go back, I'll go, I'll wheel you back and say what you said. Yeah. A lot of, there's a lot of stability, there's a lot of love. And a lot of the mm. time she's flourishing. Mm. And when she's not, I blame myself and I feel guilty. Mm -hmm. And I said, so your daughter has to be perfect. A better way of putting it, she better not cause you guilt. Yeah, I guess that's what it sounds like. Well, it might sound that way. I'm just wondering what it is for her. Yeah, so for her it would be... Mm, mum is there for me when, when everything's great. Yep, there is a rejection of me when it isn't. Because I'm also rejecting me when it isn't. So there's a rejection, a double rejection. Yep. Which is the opposite of what I'm trying to achieve. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm. So if I think about how that would feel for her, so very confusing. So very conditional, perhaps. Yeah. Um, I like how she's learned to express herself in a way that you can't control. Good for her. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> I know what gets mummy's buttons pressed. Oh, I like that. That is yeah. so cool. Go that is her. so cool. Go her. <laughs> Go her. Wow. I, I, I will admit that I've tried many a time, though I can't. Yeah. And that is actually really wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Go her. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful spirit she has and she does and the way she's expressing herself in a way that you don't get to go there finally something my mother doesn't get to place her boundaries around it's all me my mum doesn't have any boundaries around this my mum doesn't have any needs around this my mum literally just can't enter my world go her yeah I do have a need around it though I have a need for it not to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> Being yeah. honest. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let me be more precise. She's gone to a world you can't follow. Yeah. More power to her. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that actually makes me happy because I do worry that I've over-controlled her and that now she's just a, a ref, like a, a reflection of who she could have been. And I think that's where the extra level of judgment comes in of self is she could have been this, but she's this and I've caused this, but in actual fact, she's, she is that it's me. Who's not seeing that. Yeah. Oh, she's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> She is so cool. How clever. Yeah. And nine. Yeah. Just beginning with the expression. Yeah. Just learning to exhort. Because we want kids, I know you want for your kids for them to be aspects of themselves that have got nothing to do with you. And she's already doing that. Yeah. She actually <laughs> is. She's very like that. If I think about where her strengths are, they are in all places yeah. where I have no strengths. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> she's creative she's you know all of these things yeah wow yeah that's cool one of the things i consider here is we're gonna grow up either rejecting or accepting but we are gonna grow up mm. as you did you shared a little bit about your experience 
what would do you think make her the happiest? Which version would it be to accept your conditions, to completely reject your conditions, or to find her own expression of her own way of living? What do you think would light her up? I think the latter. I think that she... A, a theme that I've been feeling for a little while is that I need to give her um, more leverage, more responsibility, more growingness. Mm. And though I think if I just said, you know, go for it, you can do whatever you want now, that would be way too much. So I, I feel that for her, because it's been the opposite for, for such a long period of time, that I, I think she would love just a bit more freedom and a bit more, it's, you know, uh, I wouldn't say, ex well, she does expression. <laughs> we, we figured that one out. She does expression irrespective of what I think of it. Um, but it, allowing her to be more of her without me having an input, I think mm. would work beautifully for her. Mm. Um, the You're irony is I've conditioned her to come to me for pretty much everything. So that's, a, I believe, a gradual process of, letting her know that she can do it and she's okay. Okay. And what would that look like? I, I believe a conversation to start with um, in that, that if, if there's something, you know, if there's an internal urge that she has that she would like to, to do, allowing that internal urge to happen as long as she tells me what that is, you know, as long as there's a, um, a sense of, Oh, I don't actually really know. Because um, that wouldn't be that. So it would have to be energetically coming from me. Just, just allowing more and inputting less where it didn't matter, I think. Mm -hmm. It would be a decision from me. And... Yeah a little bit more space and a little bit more shifting um, and not having input, I think. I'm not sure. Does it make you uncomfortable? There's a part of me that doesn't know how to do it that makes me uncomfortable, yet there's a part of me that knows that this is the right thing for her and it's the right thing for me. Yeah. And so it's that in the middle where I go, okay, so how am I going to do this? What do I have to do? What do I have to do? Maybe I just need to be, and maybe I just need to just take a little, just a little seat backwards and allow her to fill the gap rather than me thinking that I need to do stuff to fill it. And then she fills the gap. Totally makes a mess of it. What next? Yeah. Because you get this inevitable because you've held yeah. on. Yeah. He can only stumble. There's no way there's going to be a good execution here. It's certainly not going to be a perfect execution. It's going to be a train wreck of execution. There is going to be literally paint on the walls. Yeah. Like yeah. Good stuff's getting broken in this. Yeah. Then? Then... That is the journey though. I believe that is the journey. It is. She, she, she has to, because she's had so many tight boundaries created around her, then a loosening of that, I believe, will be that, like a recalibration of what on earth is my world, what on earth is going on here. Beautiful. And then, then she'll learn where her own boundary is. And I think that's the difference is that yeah. it's always been mine, whereas it actually needs to be hers now. And yeah, that's going to be messy for both of us. I, I, I can see it already. Yeah. <laughs> uh, though that's where the growth is. So that's where it has to happen. And if it's messy, then it, it is. Yeah. What I need to be cognizant of is not coming in and trying to save the day. Yeah. Because and how far are you going to let the mess go for? 
that's that's always the subtlety of this the mm. nuance mm. how much yes. shit gets broken before and then if you do step in what does that look like so describe stepping in because serious precious stuff's getting broken mm. be it hearts minds or jewelry and <laughs> it's because it's just you put the good stuff out of reach that's all i can say but yeah this moment's coming where there's going to be literally just mess and she's going to be looking to you going, okay, what has that pushed? Has that tipped her into the old pattern, the one I'm used to? Will this get my mummy being the way she used to be? Because that's what she's wired to do. Like get my yes. mom to perform the way she performed. So do you get how far she's going to push the breaking? That's, that's her journey. She's got to know. And if you do have a breaking point, and you look like old mummy, she'll just know, I'll just behave this messy way and I'll get old mummy. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes 100% of sense. Yeah, I can see it definitely. And so I can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that. This, is, this, this has to be the shift now. I cannot go in and go blah, 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 yeah. blah. It, it, it can't be that way. Otherwise, so this what, is what you're going to spend it? a lot of time doing on your yeah. own. <laughs> pulling my hair out <laughs> on your own in the pantry with the door shut and loud rock music just process alone because that's about you and yeah. you need you yeah or you know growl at your husband or whatever it is that gets you pointing out how you want to be in control right now and then action you yeah. walk in to your daughter and can you do you want to have a go at describing how it might be different yeah, so I was thinking um, that where old me would jump in and save the day and try and over control again, the new me, or my new approach, I should say, um, would be to check in with her. How are you doing? What's going on? Like what, what's, ha what's happening here? Are you feeling a bit out of control and validating and mirror emotionally where she's at and go, how are you feeling? You know, it's, it's, it's a confusing time. I get it. And it's okay to be confused and it's okay to figure out where you sit. And it's wow. because mummy's confused as well. <laughs> so let's be confused together. I think that approach would be probably where I've wanted to go for so long, but yeah. haven't known how, or no, I know how, but not knowing the condition. Um, I don't know. The conditions aren't right, but I think I haven't allowed enough mess for me to then go in, in that way, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course it does. Yeah. Can I just um, tweak a little bit? Mm. Yeah. So when you go in, it, it was beautiful. Maybe consider rather than mummy feels confused as well. Let's be confused together. That's you again, co-opting yeah. her experience. And this yeah. is her experience of her. And now she's got to take care of mummy. Yeah, and great point. That's, that's the old pattern. Okay, so now I need to stop being me and I need to, okay, what's, it's now about her. Yes. So the idea is the parent is to be the mirror, not the glass. I get it. You don't want her seeing into your turmoil because then she's now responsible for your turmoil. Yeah. She's I'm the so cause of mummy's turmoil. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I so get that. And thank you. That's hence that this. Hence this. <laughs> <laughs> and there will be and there will yeah. be <laughs> with the pantry door shut loud music just and then because yeah. i think what she what we all crave is to know in our maternal figure they've got this no matter what yeah and that gives us a safe place to launch from and to be if no matter what my mum handles her shit i'm okay mm. Yeah. 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 I love that. I love that distinction. And thank you. Cause that really helps clarify where I've been so self focused in this and it's now, I want her, her to be the focus of the experience and the, the, all the good things that can happen within the mess. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think that's, that's really the, the shift that I'm feeling in this. Yeah. How delightful for her. 
Yeah. I, I wish know. I could hear this crashing now, like break something. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it to the test. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's usually door slamming. Yeah. But, you know, okay. there's, there's, you yeah. know, she, she's an expert at that. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So then what happens after that? So she's made the mess, gone after the precious jewelry or the glassware, metaphorically, whatever that is. You've done this, regained yourself, approached her and checked in on how are you doing? And I'm here. What's after that? And she may reject you, in which case that's all good, you know, just to be a steady, steady presence. What if it does become a conversation? What would that potentially look like? I actually don't know. Um, what I'm trying to weigh up is what would be more powerful is for her just to have the experience. Does it need a conversation? And the reason I'm asking that is that if the experience is enough and then there's incremental experiences like that, I'm wondering if that is enough. I, I, I'm not sure. Does there need to be a discussion? If I think about how children learn, it's, it's very much more in the doing. Yeah. When this moment, what I'd say to you is, I love how you're exploring you in this and how you can let it be about her. Yeah. Yeah. And that would be an example of what you can do for her. Yeah, I get it. So not comment on the result, what's broken, and eventually something won't be broken. Eventually there will be an A-grade paper or whatever the metaphor is. But to comment on the result is to freeze the child in the need to perform. To comment on the process and what she brought in terms of her strengths is to bring more of that within her. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah definitely. And I think that's where I was thinking if I have a conversation around this is why we're doing this, then it nullifies the experience of it in some ways. But I love how you've said it where it would just be, I, I'm, I'm really digging how you're, you know, learning your boundaries and you're growing and, yeah. you know, this is wonderful to see. And if I can help, let me know. But if not, you've got this kind yeah. of a, that yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 I see that now. Yeah. And then it's just about coming up with like a hundred different, things you love about her mm. which won't have any other impact <laughs> yeah <laughs> just about it being lovely <laughs> yeah it would be a lovely thing to do but for no other reason yeah and it helps frame her so the part of her you mentioned earlier she'd been rejected now gets celebrated by you acknowledged accepted loved fed back to her in mirroring she yeah. then gets to embrace her uglies her, the yes. bits of her she might have been trying to reject yeah 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 absolutely and the thing that i see she does trying to reject is her emotions because i've rejected them in the past whereas her emotions are almost um how she's not conformed with me which is a strength it's <laughs> awesome that's it yeah it's the strength of hers so where are you at with joy expressing joy in the space of strong emotion? I, I see that it's in, like I'm, I'm, I'm right now I'm feeling buoyant and yeah. light and possibility filled and yeah. excited for the journey. And, and the, 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 the feeling along the way I think is going to bring increments of joy. I'm not expecting a big explosion of joy and that no, being no. over. It's, yeah. it's the audience seeing her figure stuff out for herself is, is yeah. where I'll find it. Yeah. It's about delighting in what you're expressing. It's fantastic. Yeah. I'm digging you right now. So, so yeah. it's just. Thank you. Well, yeah. How's that sitting with you? It's, it's sitting really nicely. It's sitting yeah. really, I don't want to say solidly, but it's sitting really 
if you, <laughs> I can't really, I don't know what word I'm trying to use, but it sits so beautifully, really. Good. Yeah. And then there's going to come a time. <laughs> And she's going to break something metaphorically that matters mm -hmm. and will have pushed it beyond the boundaries that are acceptable for the family. Yeah. So it's a violation of the family values. What then? Because it's her job to do that. Yeah. Particularly yeah. leading into teenage years. Absolutely. Totally, totally her responsibility to fuck it all up. So yeah. what then? I was a great role model in fucking it all up. <laughs> I did that so well. <laughs> I was like, I owned that. <laughs> oh, well, then draw on that. How would you have wanted to have been parented? Yeah, yeah, so true. Um, well, ironically, a lot closer in some ways than what I was. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, any closeness was rejected by me because I, I, I wanted my freedom. You know, that was what I used to say. I just want my freedom. Yeah. And so, but that may not be her experience. I, yeah. I suspect her experience will be quite different because we are very, very different people. And so yeah. I, I think for, for, her and what and how much I believe I know her it, it's an open communication dialogue in that I'm here for you you have the space to to do what you need to do to a limit and I think there is, it's still very important I believe that the boundaries are there totally but they're appropriate boundaries for age you know you know where she is in the family she's the eldest child um, those kinds of things I think are important to maintain i think the difference is is that she has that freedom to be herself to that appropriate boundary and that's around safety and that's around yeah. you know you know not those. tipping the lunch onto the floor when guests are coming things like that yeah not having yeah. a full-blown tantrum and you know yeah totally. exactly yeah, yeah so so those appropriate things i think um is well, hey, where, let me pause you there. having yeah. a tantrum when you're nine at the wrong time says a lot mm. It says, see me. And also, can you be steady for me as I lose my emotional shit? Because I don't mm -hmm. have the words to describe what I'm feeling right now, but I am expressing how I'm feeling right now. Yeah. And if we try and shut that down, what the child's hearing is, no, I'm not acceptable in full-blown me. Yeah. So maybe not the tantrum. Yeah. Yeah, and and to be fair, I've we've worked out that if she does have a tantrum, then going to her room and slamming the door and crying really hard and being left alone to do that, she comes out fine. But if I go in there and try and talk to her, there's yeah. this back off, you know, like, yeah, give me my space. Uh, so we've learned that that's actually an appropriate way for her to experience her emotions is yeah. do it the way she chooses. Yeah without us going, you know, how can I help? You know, don't say those things about yourself. You know, what is it that we can do? She just does yeah. it. And she comes out kind of flatline again, as if nothing's happened. We're all going, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, from it. <laughs> Whereas yeah. she comes out and she's, she's solid again. So we, we've learned that. Um, I think where I was going with the boundaries, if we can jump back there, was that I had very few boundaries. Yeah. I, I had so much freedom. Mm -hmm. that I pushed as hard as I could to find a boundary. Yep. And often it would, if I found it, it was inconsistent. Got and it. so I think that's my experience. My own personal experience can be drawn upon that is that I know where it is more appropriate to have boundaries and, and those will be there for her to know that she can bounce against them. No problems. Yeah. And, but there still is that boundary. I think is, and it's, it's agreed upon. It's, it's a, that's the other thing too. I think when she moves into teenage years, we can agree upon where the boundary may be. Hers might want to be over here and mine's here or ours is here. And somehow we negotiate in the middle and that might be, you know, curfews and, and things like yeah. that. Um, I believe there can be, cause I don't want her to have the, no, you can't, you know, because of course that's a red rag to a bull for a kid a lot of the time. So it's okay. Well, how can you bring an element? How can we have a discussion around what that boundary looks like? And then we both agree to it. So that, that's down the track. Well, a nine-year-old can handle a conversation about not boundaries, but about values. Mm. 
Yeah. So a family meeting on values and agreed values is a common narrative, a shared narrative. Yeah. yeah. Around here we, around here, this is how we. Yeah. So boundaries don't have to be expressed as boundaries. They can be expressed as loving values and resourceful values. Yeah, that's lovely. I love that. And, and we do naturally do that. Uh, for instance, you know, we, we're very much around if, you know, if, um, oh, that's probably, yeah, I guess that's a value um, where we don't discriminate on how people look or if they've got a wheelchair or if they've got a different skin colour or if they've got a different yeah. sexual preference. Girls can marry girls, boys can marry boys. So we're very open and, and we, you know, we, we, we lead with kindness where we can. Yeah. Um, so all of that is the descriptor of the value. The value is kindness. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's it. And that's what, how we describe beauty. Beauty is not what you look like. It's how kind you are. Yeah. So you're right. We could, we could have more discussions. I think innately we talk about them, but it would be lovely to, uh, to sit down as a family, which we do most nights anyway, and for dinner and, you know, we do our gratefuls and all those kinds of things, but I think that could be an, a, a lovely extension next. Which values did we live today? And maybe yeah. putting the values on the wall somewhere. Yes. Or what, is our val what are our values? What do we stand for? What, what's important yeah. to us as a family? Yeah. And letting her contribute them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the other two will too, I'm sure. The five-year-old yes. probably. <laughs> She'll yeah. lead the conversation with the five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Huh. yeah. And is that, have we gone far enough down the what ifs in terms of, do you feel there's another step past that or is that enough? Do you feel for now for you to go into this different space with her? From what I can see sitting here now, I believe that's enough. I think there's, mm -hmm. there's um, you know, there will be bumps and, and potholes and all sorts of things along the way uh, to the journey of this, though I, I feel that I've got clarity that I didn't have before. And with that clarity comes, I, I love to have a, a sense of, you know, where am I headed with this? And then I can fill in the gaps. Yeah. I didn't have that vision before this call. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. yeah I get it. Yeah, I get it. And sometimes it really is. Oh, so I can do that. Yes, that's what it's been for me. Oh, so I can do that. That's available to me, and that that becomes the thing I can now learn because I know you're very similar to me. You like to learn it. You, yes, you want to embrace it once you've got the idea of it. Totally, totally. Yeah. There was one other thing that I was thinking about before. You said that you grew up with a bit too much freedom, and that your daughter's a little different, but. I see some parallels there. I often wonder, is it freedom from control or freedom that can be married, ma managed in the context of values? So one, if it's control, you wanted freedom, I imagine, and I think your daughter wants freedom from control. And so it expressed in a very explosive way. And I think that makes really good sense. That's not a difficult mm. thing to appreciate. I'm just wondering how much freedom we want from agreeing to our values. So one's a moving away explosion and one's a, I either reject the value or accept the value. And there's a little less need for the drama. Um, so I wonder if your daughter has been experienced moments of you, which have been about, I want freedom from control versus, which is a wrestle with you versus the internal wrestle, which is the autonomy we're looking for within her. I'm wrestling with this value. So one's about you and one's about her growth. Do you see the difference? Yeah, I do. I do. And yeah, I, yeah, for her, I believe it's, it's moving away from the control and mine was very much moving away from control as well. Um, so you say you want freedom, but I'm always really curious about freedom from what? Mm. It's freedom from an external party that wants to control us. I think that's healthy. Mm. But after a while, if it becomes a pattern, it ceases to be healthy because there are times when taking the cues from others is a really healthy, functional, sensible, loving thing to do. But if yeah. we learn the pattern of you can't control me, that has its own, there's a glitch in the system. Mm -hmm. Versus, 
I'm moving towards my values and learning how to express them or I'm rejecting a value that mum values. It's a very different internal conversation, which has a lot more autonomy and figuring outness for her yeah. versus the ease of saying no mum. Yes. In an explosive yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like we're taking away the entire internal dialogue. It's just like to say no to you. I and mean, the easiest gig in the world is saying no to mum. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, that it's that richness of the I'm going to decide my values for me in line with the bigger family values is, is where I'd love for her to go Great. because there's space there, the space for her to decide and to be her. And she's entirely capable of this. I suspect what I've been doing is clipping her wings around this uh, for whatever stuff's been going on. So it's that space that I would love for her to want and and you said you weren't creative <laughs> <laughs> this is all creativity <laughs> is it oh gosh i suppose i look i look at you know my stick figures and think i'm not creative <laughs> <laughs> got it because <laughs> i still draw stick figures believe me yeah. <laughs> well, creativity has many flavors mm, it does and you've been very creative with this. I can see your creative juices firing up around how you can express this. This is all induction. You've been doing yeah. the deductive, but this is all induction. You're going to the white space on the page. There's no black. Here. You're not looking at the words. You're looking at the space. Yeah. 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 That's true. Isn't it? That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So we're drawing on creativity. What else do you think you're going to draw on within you? Patience, man. <laughs> I, I, I jest, I jest. Um, well, I was going to say patience for yourself, I assume, is what you meant. Yeah, and patience for my old patterning of wanting to jump in versus not. And that, that's Which really... Is patience for you. Yeah, you yeah, you're right. That's not about her. It's your yeah. intolerance of your own anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's that jump in, jump in, jump in. Yeah, I get that. Uh, so, well, patience then, definitely. And I like, there's a, there's a sense of, of, of commitment to the outcome that I feel I'll need to bring sometimes if I have that feeling of wanting to jump in. It's mm. that no, like this is not going to serve her. Yep. So manage yourself is, is there's much around that manage yourself so that you don't feel that you need to manage her. So and managing your own emotional reactivity. Yeah. yeah. Which she just hones in on like a foaming pigeon. <laughs> Again, I bring you like, back to the. <laughs> <laughs> She's a master at it. She's a master at just pressing that button wherever that button is. Yeah. And so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually nothing to do with her in this discussion right now. It's so yeah. much around how do I manage my own self within yeah. this space? Because as much as I'm giving it to her, I'm also giving it to myself. Yeah. And you got it. That's a, you know, a little uncomfortable feeling yeah. uh, only because it's new and, and it hasn't been there that way though. At the same time, it's re exciting and relieving as well. Yeah. Well, she's not responsible for your emotional reactivity. And no. I love that you're seeing your own responsibility for it. Yeah. Well, it can only be being the parent, I believe, in this situation right now. It can only be me. May I suggest tap into your strength of humour? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. I don't know where that came from, but I'm suspecting you're going to need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. 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 And, you know, what's really lovely is that, you know, we, we do laugh at similar things. There, uh, there is actually a shared humour. So if I can make it silly enough that she thinks it's funny, the resistant drop, resistance drops with both of us. So yeah. you're right, you, you've landed on it. That, that's a, that would actually be a really lovely strategy for both of us yeah. to, to learn and to be okay in this newness. And what about love in moments of rejection? When she's rejecting herself, which looks like rejection of you, mm -hmm. what would love look like? 
a, a really big cuddle and a, a, a lot of reassurance. And um, with her, she seeks me out mm. to cuddle me way more than she ever has. And so I, I make myself available for that because whatever she's reaching out for, I, I want to accept that. Um, and we, you know, she's, we've got this thing where I, as a baby, I used to kiss her right here. And sometimes she'll say to me, mum, kiss me there. And it's a really lovely little, inter it's just on the top of the nose for anyone who can't see, yeah. um, you know, kiss me on the, on the top of the nose. And that's a lovely little intimate thing that we do because I don't kiss the other girls there. And so I think love for her is, 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 is time spent with her um, and it's also cuddles. She's very... I'll say it again. What would love look like when she's rejecting herself? Although it looks like rejection of you. She's not asked. She's not... It's easy to love someone when they're being loving. Mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. If she's rejecting of herself and for me... I don't feel the rejection that she's rejecting me when she rejects herself. What I feel is empathy and compassion for whatever she's going through. And she has anxieties and things that um, certain behaviors that, that mean that I feel that she's out, you know, I can see what she needs. And so going back to school, for instance, was quite anxious for her. And uh, she lay down in her bed and I just reached and she's in a top bunk and I just patted her bottom like I did when she was a baby. And again, it's not a fiery rejection in that moment, but it's a, I don't know how to handle myself right now. Mm. And so the patting the bottom settles her right down just as it did. Cause I patted her bottom for years, <laughs> um, you know, to get her to sleep and to reassure her. Um, anytime they cry, I pat them. So um, when she's rejected, if she's angry, that's different. So I, I, I appreciate it. The cogs are turning. <laughs> so thank you for indulging this with me. Uh, if there's an angry rejection of self, then I believe that the most respectful way that I could demonstrate love to her is ask her if she needs me, if I can help her, if I can be with her and allow her to decide. Yeah. And that, that I think is what love would look like in those moments. Yeah. Is just allowing her to decide. And if she wants me to stay, then I will. And then if she says no, go, I'll, I'll ask her, when can I come back? Um, because I believe that that's the space that I probably haven't given her. And I think that that would really help her to know that I'm there at any time that she needs it. And she has autonomy. And she has autonomy to, yeah. to tell me when. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else around this to any, we could look at that would make it more complete? I don't think so. I think this has been enormous and I'll be listening back and writing notes and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think this is a really fantastic place to start and I have such heightened clarity from where we started at the beginning of the call when I was just focusing on my own guilt. Yeah. Whereas it's, it, it actually can't be that about that anymore. Good on you. It doesn't Good serve you. her. It doesn't serve me. Yeah. And this whole and discussion is coloured in, you know, coloured in the beauty, good. I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's how I'm feeling as well. Yeah. There were some loose lines and now there's some texture and layers to it. Yeah. And are you sensing you, have, uh, you know your next steps? Do we need to go through your next steps? Are you, do you have some clarity around that other than the recording? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's a good place to start. It's a good place to start. Uh, yeah, I do. I believe it's a decision and a choice now for me to allow her more scope to be her yeah. and allow her to be mess messy within that and then just, just, just catch her at the other end if that's what she needs. So I think that's where we, st well, I, I feel uh, that that's where we start and we see how that goes and then incrementally see what, how, how something else goes. And, yeah. I, I and maybe you remember the conversation about values. 
Yes, exactly. And then values. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Generally at this point, what I do is I'd go through all of it because I've captured it in my mind, but I just, I'd recommend just go through the coaching session and you'll pick up yeah. what's relevant to you. Yeah. 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 Okay. I really do love that values discussion. I think it's, yeah. it, it will be a lovely thing for the whole family. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And gratitudes are great. They're kind of short term. That's what the studies show. Yes. Whereas values driven decisions, that's a lifetime of making great, better decisions. Yeah. Not always getting our way, but making better decisions. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so um, I invite you to go to a time in the future that yes. hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. And your daughter is full on Banshee mode. Like she's turned it up to another level because you kept passing the tests. Mm -hmm. You kept being there for her and being loving and good humoured and present and non-reactive and all the stuff she's not expecting. So she ups it because she wants to get the old mum back, not consciously, just unconsciously. Mm-hmm. Just notice yourself maintaining. There's some of this in the pantry and then the expectation and you're just saying to yourself, huh, this is the next level we spoke about. She had to accelerate. She had to exaggerate. She had to go next level to know that I'm for real, that my love is without condition, regardless of the mess. And then to another time where there's a whole other level. And none of what we've discussed works. And you're needing to draw on all of it. And your desire to go back to controlling and shutting this shit down is running so strong in you. And notice instead the focus is on her. And the respect that where she ends is you're not there. Yeah. That that's her. That's her expression. That's her testing. That's her learning how to react and be with someone who is consistent. And you write it out and then there's another level and she goes to another level and seriously good shit is broken. The precious stuff you thought you never had to lock away away, metaphorically or physically, it's smashed. And every part of you just thinks that is a boundary violation. It's not okay. You want to control it. And instead you invite the conversation because she's capable of it for her to reflect on her own behavior, see herself reasonably accurately. And be aware of how she was aligned with her values. And she walks away better for knowing herself and what she did instead of knowing what you think of it. You gave her that gift. And you can yeah. serve as many of those as you like. <laughs> and there will be layers, you're right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like when you said, and then she pushed it, and nothing, nothing that we've spoken about works, I went, <gasps> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was that immediate sense of, oh God, that yes. is coming. <laughs> yes. Yes. So preparing me for it is actually really great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, this is the gift for her. Mm. It is. Yeah. We're preparing her for the 15 year old she's going to be. Yeah. In a blink of an eye. Yeah. And then the 21 year old, when she goes out and does this on, people outside of the family who don't know and she's doing differently because she had the space. We're investing now in the next 10, 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Thank Very you. Grateful. So am I incredibly. Very Thank grateful. you. I'm going to move again because now the batteries are going flat. It's been quite the mobile session. <laughs>